Hey guys, it's Dave and Bex here from Airfire Walking Stones and today we're here to do the book review of A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Yes, so there it is. And we're going to head on to somewhere a little bit warmer to do the review because it's absolutely freezing out here. But we thought we'd do it in a woodland setting because, uh, well, you'll find out really. So yeah, we will head off to a warmer climate. Climate. <laughs> climate. Climate. <laughs> So a warmer room and we will see you then. What's up guys? We're back in the warm. It's freezing out here. <laughs> My nose nearly dropped off. Dave's hands were purple and blue. No, one hand one hand was fine, this hand was blue, red, orange, <laughs> multicolours, and I couldn't feel it. I was like that all the way through. But here we are, and this is our book review of A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, which is behind me, and I think personally this is the best non um, illustrated version cover. Don't you? Yes, I've you gave me your old cover. Yeah. Which is the one that if you're if you've seen this from Instagram, the one on Instagram, the photo that I took, is the book my version of it which was her old version, and this is obviously the new version, which actually is a lot nicer. And then there's another version, isn't there, with like illustrations in it. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so we'll just go straight into it. So just to wrap it all up, um, the story is about a little boy called Connor, and he's going through a lot um, emotionally. His mother isn't very well, he isn't getting on at school, and his grandmother is really evil. She's not very nice at all, no. You really, you can really feel that that she's not the, she's not a social, socially sort of type person. She's not a people person, so to speak. Yeah, she kind of, because her daughter is ill, she kind of takes it out on Connor, mm. which is not really fair. And and she takes it out on the dad. He's one night he's in bed and his name is spoken and he's a little bit like, what was that? Mm. Um, and then he's got like all sorts coming into his window and he obviously goes out and is it a yew tree it's a yew tree he what happens is he hears <coughs> whispers in the night and across from his from the house his mum's house there is a railway line on the other side of the railway line near the church is a yew tree and it, the whispers he keeps thinking he's dreaming but you're not sure if he's dreaming or it's real yeah patrick has this way of making you assume that it's a dream just because it's how Connor feels but you know in the right mind that it isn't because there's too much physical evidence that it's not. Yeah I, I will admit that when I, when I read it I was actually a bit lost with it sometimes I wasn't sure which way it was going mm -hmm. if it was something like mentally in his head that he was struggling with so you know like some people make stuff up to cope with his mother mother's illness yeah so you sort of, at the same time, you're kind of trying, it keeps you reading it just to find out if it's real or not. So that was really good. Yeah, so we don't want to spoil you, so basically that is the overall story. Um, obviously Connor is, I would say, about, would you say 12? He's about 11 or 12. And he's just going through school, he's obviously, excuse me. He is getting bullied by one person. Connor's getting bullied by a boy called Harry and he's not the nicest of people. He it's it's kinda weird because towards the end he's like, I don't see you and is it, I don't see you anymore. Yeah, you're invisible to me. Yeah, and that bit was weird because he's spent so many years bullying him and then all of a sudden it's like clicked, like no emotion to him. Yeah. It's like he's forgotten. He's run out of bullying him. Yeah. And he's obviously, it's a, it's a sort of, if you like Harry Potter, it's like, imagine Connor is Harry and it, the cronies are like Harry, or the, the Harry in this in this book is um, the Malfoy and then you've got Crabbe and Goyle and that's Anton and Sully. Mm. So there's that sort of thing there, isn't there? And he's got a friend called Lily and he feels very, very isolated in school. Uh, because everyone treats him differently because of his mother's illness. He, Connor's kind of blame. Well, he doesn't blame Lily, but um, 
he's kind of a bit hostile towards her just because she did um, she did announce that his mum was ill which mm. she didn't think she was doing anything wrong but he obviously didn't want people to find out and he, he it's really hard for him to cope with so much going on in his life being so young it is a very emotional roller coaster it is and you, you can see where it's coming from and it, there's a lot of realism in it so basically the reason for the title monster calls is there is actually a monster in there yeah he's he's like an ancient god that has seen other people call for the monster so yeah he answers calls to people who are in trouble they don't call for him but it's kind of like they, they mentally call for help. Like everyone has this situation where in life you'll go through a really bad time and you'll feel very alone, you feel very isolated. And basically, even though you're trying to keep strong in yourself and trying to cope by yourself, let's face it, we all have this little moment where we kind of need help. So this is basically, he's kind of like mentally calling him. Yeah. He comes to him because he needs him, but he doesn't feel he needs him and he doesn't feel like he's called him. And obviously this monster, so to speak, has uh, witnessed other people and gone through, has different stories to tell of other people that he's helped as well. Yeah, kind of every so often. And they're all about um, in the past where people haven't called the monster but he's helped them out. Mm. I've really, actually really enjoyed them, especially the first one. It's interesting when when you read them. We'll try not to spoil the actual too much of the story, but the the stories that he tells have like a little twist in themselves, and you sort of sit there at the end of one of the like each story that he tells. You sit in there exactly the same as Connor, confused and wondering, wait a minute, that didn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. You'll understand when you read it, but it obviously you know for a fact that in the end it's all going to make sense, and I that's what kept me reading it. I was really wanting to know what the next story was, what the next story was. And then the last story is actually Connor's, and it's got to be truth. It's got to be a story of truth. And, mm. you know, you, you can't help but read it because you have to find out what is this nightmare he's been having. Because he keeps having this nightmare. He tries to hide it at first. Mm. Like, I can't remember what he says. I think he says, oh, it's the bullies, it's the bullies. But it isn't. You begin to realise that he is actually really struggling with life in general. He grows in such a, into such a good character, like he he stands up for himself eventually. Yeah, it's like we say when we don't know you don't know if the monster's there or it's an imagination or it's it's real or it's not. It's because for most people who read it, I mean, especially for me and Bex, we we saw it as the fact that it's the monster is kind of his conscience, isn't it? It's his. It's all about the strength, and it makes him stronger and stronger. And it, it's so clever, honestly, you kind of got to read it to understand it. Mm -hmm. I think trying to explain it all, like, right now, is very difficult because we're trying to say it in in bulk, in, like, one go. Yeah. But obviously, excuse me, <coughs> this is the tea. Um, <laughs> the tea. Uh, so, yeah, you, you know, as you read it, you're obviously following a journey of him struggling to go through all these things. And you can see that strength and the main key to the whole entire story, which... I will admit it's actually very emotional. So powerful. It is very the powerful. Oh right? my god! It's the first book I've ever put because I don't I don't read as much as this one here, and I didn't. I've only just got back into reading, but she suggested a monster calls, and I thought I sat there one night, stared at it across the room, and was like, I'll give it a go. One day, I read it in literally one day. It was incredible. I just said wow at the end. I think it's perfect for those who are either going through the same situation, either bullying or. You know, a family member that's ill. Or like very ill. Or like say if your parents have just got divorced or something, it's definitely worth a read because it gives you that sense of everything's going to be okay. I would say that Patrick Ness is one beautiful writer. He has some amazing talents. I think he's won something like three or four awards for his writing. This, this whole book of Patrick's was based on a, another idea from it's from a author who sadly passed away and she wasn't able to complete the work and she passed the idea on to Patrick Ness. Her name was Siobhan, I do apologise if I get this last name wrong, Siobhan Dowd or Dow. Uh, we'll pop it on the screen right now and that's her actual name, it's worth looking up. 
and she unfortunately passed away before she could complete a monster cause so she passed it on to Patrick Ness who then created this beautiful piece and obviously it's like a tribute to her as well. Um, sorry I'm a bit out of breath I just ran up the stairs. So Patrick Ness has written quite a few books mainly more adulty this one I would say she can't breathe. This one's more sort of borderline teen adult. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, I would obviously recommend it to every age, but with caution because it's very hard to teen and it can bring out some bad, yeah. I would say, memories if you've been through similar things. Yeah, and I've, I know people in, in, the re in very recently who have been through very similar things and when reading this book I actually felt, really felt it a lot more so it is very sort of detailed in certain areas and you do get pulled into that experience and it can be very, I'm trying to think of the word really, it's, it can bring you down a bit. You can pull at your heartstrings, yeah. maybe. is that the right word? Yeah but it's uplifting as well at the same time, mm -hmm. it's got that balance. Yeah it teaches you a lot of what maybe think before you act and maybe um, that everything will be okay towards the end because sometimes you do get in that little bit of a rut and think it's not going to get better but yeah I think every single person even people that are watching right now have been through at least once in their life if not more of times where they look at things and go it's not going to get any better I've hit a wall and that's it I'm not going to get over it I'm done yeah and this this book actually tells you how to do that, so to speak. It could it's a little bit like a different way of doing a self help self help yeah. book. Yeah, there's other books out there where you can read to help you get through things, but this is kind of got that in there that would probably help you, and you could look at life a lot differently after reading the book. You have quite a few characters. No, well. You have about six characters in this book and four of them are the main. So we have Connor, his mom, his gran and his dad, which he, I was kind of on the line with putting his dad in because even though he's just in the end, he he is a big part of Connor's story of how he copes because his dad has this, um, this motto of you've got to be strong and Connor He's like, why have, I got, why have I got to be strong? I'm just a child. But then he understands towards the end, doesn't he? Yeah. Even though his mum isn't in the book as much, you definitely get this sense of warmth from her when you do see her. She's like, definitely... Um, she's, she's, she's preparing for the worst, but um, not making it obvious so that she freaks Connor out even more because he's already going through a lot. And then we have his grandma who, even though she's like a really, um, she's very strict. Patrick has done such an amazing job getting her across, showing how she's, because she, she's going through things as well as looking after Connor, like she's, she may or may not lose her daughter. Patrick's strength is mainly writing characters his story building is good but definitely it's it's more character driven i would think that counts in a book obviously yeah, obviously it does but i mean in the sense that some books you can have out there that haven't got the the detail in the character the build you know the the way you follow them i think i think the big thing in anything this could be in books it could be in films it could be in tv shows you've got to make the reader care about the characters. Basically what I would say is go and read it because it definitely opens your eyes. It's such a quick read like even though it's really small you get so much from it but it's like gone within seconds and like as soon as you put it down I was like I want to read it again. I must admit I nearly read it the other night. <laughs> I have like a new book to read but I still kind of was hovering between this one and this one and I was like... <laughs> uh, it's but very yeah. addictive isn't it? It's like got that... It's a page turner. It's Yeah it is a page turner. I didn't actually believe in them. <laughs> to 
be honest, because not a big reader at all, but that book really has made me see that there are actually awesome books out there that can keep you sat there and reading, and it's it's good for you as well mm -hmm. that you're reading. It helps sleep as well. This book has won three or four awards, which we totally agree with, don't we? Yes, completely. Definitely deserves them. Our rating between both of us, we both agreed on it after we both read it, and it's definitely straight up there, five out of five. Definitely. Without a doubt, five out of five. So uh, we've we've got a shout out. Uh, we do a shout out every so often, and this one especially, you're going to look at the picture right about now. We've disappeared, and instead we have a very very girly, very very pink picture. Which I love. Yeah. I, I think it's absolutely incredible. Uh, it's Harley Quinn, a very pink Harley Quinn, a very pink Batman, and a rainbow Batman, which I've never ever seen before. And this is by CT Universe. Please follow her on Instagram. She's from France and she actually got hold of us and said that she would make this photo especially for our channel. She's like really friendly. If you get into conversation with her, she she's like like one of the nicest people I've met on Instagram so far. Yeah, seriously. And she actually, I didn't actually know she was from France. So your English is really good. I'm just going to say that right now as you're watching this. Your English is really, really good. So yeah. <laughs> don't think it isn't. Because I didn't realise until you told me um, on a special message. But yeah, massive thank you to you for actually making this picture for us especially to put and shout out on this channel and on this review. At the end of this review is very appreciative. We, You don't realise how much that means to us. Like, that is a big thing for somebody out there to actually want, enjoy our work, follow our work and contribute to our work so to speak so yeah I think I was at work when he told me and I just I just couldn't believe it I was like yeah. wow I, I was over the moon so many nice people out there moon. but so CT nice Universe CT Universe link is on right now uh, her name and everything will be on the screen somewhere yeah we'll on put here. it down below as well it's around here somewhere you can see it we can't until we put it on so there we go and CT Universe follow her on Instagram and every and obviously from us guys, arrivederci, as usual. Bye bye. Bye! Okay. Okay, let me, let me help you up. No, I can't. I can't feel my feet. Who's come here. Who takes me? Can I don't know. Can I come in for fuck's sake? <laughs> Who takes you that? <laughs> let me help you up. This, <laughs> let me just... <laughs> Have you been drinking? <laughs> I wish. Oh, my feet. Oh, oh, Are you oh, okay? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. oh no, I've got pins and needles. Pins I need to needles. get to the bed. I need okay. to get to the bed. <laughs> Quick, before I fall up down. Oh, Adam, oh, that's so, so huge. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going in? Just checking. There we go. Okay, so...